questions um, and uh, looking forward to, to your presentation. Hi, and thank you, Alexandra, for the introduction. Um, and uh, well, I think we can uh, already um, start and go to the next um, first slide. Thank you. Um, so in terms of what we explored here, the main topics were um, ADO's actions, uh, the changing dynamics and uh, the results. So uh, ADO's action in terms of uh, advocacy, coalition building and uh, direct engagement, and then changing of the sport dynamics um, since the Taliban takeover and the nature of these changes and also changes of dynamics that have resulted in outcomes uh, and actions. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so uh, before uh, we get to the findings, I wanted to mention a few points um, about this report. And uh, the first one is uh, that the focus of this work uh, was, of, Sorry, okay. Yafta hai mohem musharakat diaspora afghan. Yafta hai mohem ma dar maurid dar maurid was a conducted from mid-August to um, end of September, and we covered 60 ADOs from uh, Europe, North America, Afghanistan, neighboring countries, and Australia. Uh, and key informant interviews were also conducted with representatives of 10 ADOs, as well as um, DRC, diaspora program staff. So the breakdowns are available in the report, if you want to have a look. Uh, then this report is um, presenting a snapshot of what was happening immediately after the takeover and in the span of six weeks. Some of the points mentioned here might not be exactly the same right now as things move very quickly, uh, but uh, there are challenges and opportunities presented here that uh, still remain true and probably will stay uh, unchanged unless additional interventions um, are made. Uh, and lastly, this report can also show some of the common challenges experienced by these type of organizations in similar setting, so it can help us uh, anticipate what to uh, expect in the face of other crises in future. So uh, we can go to the findings now in the next slide. Thanks. And um, so starting with the Afghan diaspora organizations themselves, they were mainly active in the fields of integration, culture, advocacy, legal aid, um, resettlement support, and uh, education, primarily focusing on the diaspora communities in their country of residence, but also uh, some were active in various areas of humanitarian aid and development support in Afghanistan. We also saw that there was a stronger um, online presence in US and Canada. Uh, updates of activities were almost non-existent in the neighboring countries because of the limited operational space and their political uh, context there. Next slide, please. Um, so all the interviewed ADOs had gone through some sort of change in um, their areas of focus or approach. Uh, inactive ADOs started to mobilize their resources um, and changes in focus were mostly driven by the practical and logistical challenges such as the collapse of the banking system. Uh, factors such as ethnicity and age range also affected organizations approach um, and challenges. Um, Hazara diaspora organizations experienced more ethnically charged questions and comments from their donors and uh, the wider community, also uh, organizations with only young core members found it difficult to uh, connect with um, older generations. And next slide, please. Uh, ADO's main areas of activity can be divided into four main categories. 
community engagement, advocacy and awareness raising, emergency fundraising, and direct assistance. And can we go to the next one, please? So we identified uh, some key elements uh, with uh, regard to ADU's uh, community engagement activities. These activities are usually quite dependent on core members' network. And the bulk of this engagement work is through friends and family. But also, this is not the case for all the ADOs. Some uh, took a more strategic approach uh, with having uh, community engagement activities as a separate work stream as opposed to ad hoc and based on immediate needs. We uh, also saw ADOs taking some innovative approaches, such as engaging with uh, social media influencers uh, to expand their reach. As for examples in the next slide, uh, we, we, we can see Baba Mazari Foundation um, uh, collaborated with Whitby Theater in Australia with a fundraising performance which raised over 12,000 uh, Australian dollars. Then we have Mahbubas Promise. Uh, they conducted live stream chats and panel discussions which was supported uh, by an Australian uh, influencer activist and a model. Uh, she hosted uh, some of these events uh, or where it was among the people who participated in um, some of these sessions. Then uh, we have Afghan Women's Support Forum in UK. They posted about organizing a live stream concert in support of Afghanistan with classical music of South Asia to uh, two of their locally based musicians. Uh, next, please. So advocacy and uh, awareness raising, this is, this is the area uh, that most of the captured ADU activities fell under with 48% uh, of all of our records. ADUs organized protests and published uh, official statements, open letters, engaged with the media and news networks. They also conducted information sessions and panel discussions. If we go to the next slide, we can see some of the examples. Uh, so one of the key advocacy and awareness raising activities early on was the August 28th protests, which were held in uh, more than uh, 40 cities and across 17 countries. Another one was the Hazara Committee, uh, Committee in UK, um, they were the primary signatory of um, a letter to Home Office Minister on community sponsorship for refugees resettlement. And they also advocated for the Hazaras to be recognized as a vulnerable group. Also another example was a petition shared by uh, the Kehan Foundation, which collected more than 32,000 signatures. As a result, the request uh, for an urgent policy for the evacuation of Afghans who had uh, worked with the Dutch military and uh, Dutch NGOs was handed over to the members of the parliament. And subsequently, it was affirmed by the cabinet to be carried out in full. Um, next slide, please. So uh, for the fundraising activities, in total, 26 fundraising campaigns were captured, including four on the GoFundMe platform, 14, sorry, uh, on the GoFundMe platform. These campaigns had uh, target amounts ranging from a few thousands to a million dollars or pounds. Uh, and uh, they had uh, different types of promotional strategy from like simple one-time take space uh, to uh, more comprehensive ones with, uh, with follow-up reports. Next, please. So these follow-up reports were on the amounts raised and sometimes also on the provided services that as uh, the result of their campaigns. Uh, we, we have to keep in mind that uh, at that point in time, many ADOs considered information sharing regarding services delivered may put the volunteers or the beneficiaries at risk. So these types of reports were generally quite limited. Uh, support was provided both in Afghanistan and uh, in the host uh, countries of ADOs. 
considering the large number of uh, internally displaced individuals who had come to Kabul, several ADOs focused their activities uh, in this area, but also reached out to families in, in Ghazni, Mazar Sharif, Maidan Vardak, Nangahar, and Faryab, among other locations. They, uh, they also supported the resettlement of newly re relocated Afghans in their uh, countries of residence with um, accommodation facilities, uh, uh, non-food items, food, legal aid, uh, also health and uh, psychological support. For example, uh, we can see in the next slide. So uh, you can see, um, I think this one is on the right. Children without borders uh, fundraising campaign resulted in cash and relief package distribution to at least more than 300 families in Kabul, Ghazni, Mazar Sharif, and Faryab provinces, with each package worth between uh, uh, 150 and 300 uh, Canadian dollars. Uh, this, this picture uh, we see here uh, belongs to one of their distributions which took place in collaboration with the Vatan Project, uh, which is another ADO in Canada, and Dress Your Face, an um, uh, Instagram uh, influencer account belonging to Tamana Roshan, uh, an influencer, a beauty influencer. Then the other picture, uh, you can see the Afghan Community and Welfare Center uh, in the UK, uh, they're being supported by the Beacon uh, Community Church uh, for collection of donations and deliveries to newly uh, relocated Afghan, uh, Afghans in uh, Birmingham and London. So, for for instance, this this ADO, uh, they were they were very involved with their with their community. So, each 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 time each week, they would they would post. Uh, um, the, about their activities and uh, different different communities coming uh, to support them uh, with the, with the donations. So if we go to the next slide, please. Um, so the bindings also included some additional elements such as um, accountability, coalitions, and coordinations, and the challenges uh, faced uh, by the ADOs. Uh, next, please. Uh, ADOs used uh, various measures to um, ensure accountability. Some ADOs uh, organized Q&A sessions before and after conducting their activities to explain uh, the process uh, and answer any questions their uh, donors might have. They also published updates, uh, sometimes accompanied by location information, images, and videos of their activities um, and also interview is mentioned being in regular contact with the donors from their community through uh, phone calls and, and WhatsApp. Uh, some uh, ADOs reported uh, instructing their uh, volunteers to be open uh, to feedback and to pass on the information back to the organization uh, for further action. This is particularly true for, for, or, uh, for ADOs that had um, direct assistance in Afghanistan, which made the volunteer the only contact person between the beneficiary and the organization. Um, next, please. Um, in response to the crisis uh, in uh, Afghanistan, ADOs formed new coalitions and strengthened their old coalitions. Organizations who uh, were already working in partnerships, coordination calls and meetings become more regular and frequent. ADOs had different experiences regarding coordination. Less uh, established organizations reported uh, difficulty locating other like-minded um, organizations. And even after forming new coalitions, some experienced difficulty maintaining them. Uh, forming new coalitions seem to take place through individual connections of a ADO members. Uh, when an idea was shared with the uh, friends or family members, then they would put them in touch with uh, people who shared the same ideas. And lastly, uh, the majority of joint uh, fundraising campaigns were organized among country level coalitions of ADOs. 
Uh, we can go to the next one, please. Thank you. Um, as for challenges, uh, there were reports of uh, several issues experienced by the ADOs. For instance, um, contextual challenges where the worsening uh, security environment meant either a total loss of access to their contacts or the possibility of putting the lives of their volunteers at risk. Another one was the uh, total collapse of the banking system in Afghanistan, which prevented some ADOs from transferring the necessary funds. Others, especially the ones with uh, bases there, could use the funds already transferred uh, before the takeover uh, to, to respond. The other challenge is, uh, the other challenge was uh, the lack of core funding. The interview the ADOs uh, mentioned their unstable funding situation uh, to support the administrative purposes doesn't allow them to provide the necessary services despite them having uh, the necessary skills to do so. Uh, although the lack of uh, registration uh, in host country prevented some ADOs from having proper uh, banking and registration information, which it turns uh, which in turn negatively, uh, negatively affect uh, the fundraising uh, capabilities. A lot of these ADOs uh, were, uh, some were registered, uh, but, uh, but also we have these uh, uh, groups of people coming together and uh, trying, trying to respond, especially, especially with the current crisis, uh, or, or they had already um, their, their, their group, but they were inactive and wanted to wanted to uh, quickly uh, respond, but uh, because of these this registration issues, they were unable to, to respond uh, in a way they wanted to. Other uh, challenges uh, included uh, fraud and uh, corruption in Afghanistan. As a key challenge, it was mentioned uh, by uh, by uh, the interview ADOs and uh, insufficient cross ADO networks. This, this one is especially true for, for younger or less experienced uh, ADOs. Um, as uh, for the recommendations, uh, so we have uh, supporting host country level coalitions by involving um, relevant donors. Uh, so by having uh, networking events with the aim of further uh, uh, collaboration among ADOs at the country level, the, partic the participants can uh, have a shared understanding of their context, operational space, and limitations. Also, this will be more cost-effective uh, for in-person meetings, which uh, means probably easier for the ADOs to set them up themselves. Donors with specific interests in those countries can be involved um, as well, like the NIDA for Denmark, and uh, they can support building diaspora coalitions through multi-year plans. Uh, we, we had an example of this in Germany with GIZ involved, uh, which uh, seemed um, quite successful. Um, next one was uh, organizing events with uh, clear objectives. So, uh, networking, uh, networking events, and uh, particularly the ones organized by DRC, were mentioned in some of the interviews. However, it seemed that uh, they were not perceived equally useful for everyone. Younger ADOs really appreciated these venues, but, uh, but for some, especially the ones with already strong partnerships, they would have wanted to have the chance of engaging with uh, donors to gain support for, for specific projects. Uh, then we have conducting organizational self-assessment training. Uh, we know that uh, ADOs have uh, different levels of capacity. For ADOs to be able to form new coalitions, it is important to understand their own capacities and weaknesses so they can have mutually beneficial uh, engagement. This was also mentioned as a challenge by some, uh, like uh, when they do get to meet each other, they don't know what they can offer or request from others. Uh, this, is, uh, this is usually an issue for the less experienced uh, ADOs. Uh, uh, 
and then conducting comprehensive financial training. Um, some ADOs are already suffering from an absence of adequate financial planning, which has prevented them from achieving their goals. Uh, when developing financial management training for those four organization topics, such as accountability, financial risk mitigation, and managing a potential influx of funding should be uh, considered. Then we have developing short and targeted e-learning courses to increase uh, their online profile. Um, so even though uh, a lot of material is already available online, targeted courses or packages for those for organization can still be useful. Uh, for instance, content for online safety, uh, as they conduct a lot of uh, their uh, coordination and reporting online, Media awareness for the uh, for present their organization when having interviews, uh, digital uh, marketing to achieve the things they want uh, through their online campaigns, uh, as well as ethical reporting uh, can be created for non-technical users. And um, lastly, uh, translating uh, key demo uh, documents to uh, Farsi. Uh, uh, and Pashtu, uh, we know that a large number of Afghan diaspora organizations, and particularly Demag and diaspora uh, program partners, reside in Europe, and their first or second language even is not English. Translation of documents could be limited to training material and summary reports, or even ideally could contain relevant context analysis and uh, needs assessment reports to uh, support providing the full picture for the population of concerns, such as the situation of Afghans in neighboring countries. These don't have to be uh, produced by DRC, but could be made available along the other documents on the MAC website. Um, and I think that's it for uh, this segment. Thank you very, very much, Nida. Um, really appreciate. And I think uh, I see quite a lot of questions uh, coming in in the chat and uh, and uh, in the Q and A. So um, please stay stay with your video because I I would like to to feedback some to you actually. Um, I I was informed that there are slight hiccups with the interpretation. I apologize for that. Um, I will try to speak slow and, and allow the interpreters to, to translate things. Um, Nida, maybe for a start, there was, uh, there was a question on the geographical spread um, regions, countries. Is there any data? Have you seen any region or country where the Afghan diaspora is particularly strong, um, efficient, and supportive? Has there been differences in the regions in how they engage? Um, well, the thing to keep in mind about this, um, this RTR specifically is that uh, our, our focus was very much online. We did conduct interviews, key informal interviews, uh, with with uh, with different organizations, but uh, we had a, and this is reflected in the limitation section of the report that uh, we were not able to have uh, that um, the diverse geographic uh, locations that we wanted. We, uh, it's this is this is not representative at all. So we cannot really generalize uh, some of some of these these findings. One of the things are. Uh, I did mention, uh, especially about the, their online presence, was that uh, ADOs in in uh, in North America seemed um, more active with their with their advocacy, with with their, with their awareness raising compared, especially to Europe, and then compared to the to the neighboring countries, which again look non-existent. So. Um, but but the fact is, uh, because we 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 were not um, able to conduct uh, as many as uh, uh, we wanted for the for the uh, for the interviews. Uh, we 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 cannot really we cannot really just based uh, based on the findings only uh, say that uh, like uh, the the ADOs uh, in North America are more active because 
through uh, some of the discussion, we know a lot, a lot was happening in Europe, which was not reflected online. But, but uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, based on the findings here alone, I wouldn't say like this region uh, did better than the other. Uh, Australia was really good also, uh, but neighboring countries exception because because like the context is quite different there. Thanks. Yeah, that I mean we we discussed a lot while you were conducting research of indeed the difficulties of looking and in, into the neighboring countries and and also diasporas not potentially the one not wanting to be seen. So I think that's always an, an interesting element as well. We have one, one question here from Martin Russell um, on the intergenerational complexities in the diaspora, whether you found that the, the younger generation or the next generation um, were developing different forms of diaspora organizations, potentially tech-based community platforms the, and the like, um, or if they have a different scope um, feeling than the more established, the more long-term organizations that have already been before. And, if so, what could be, in your opinion, and from, from the research you've done and from the people you spoke to, what could be the glue and the connection across these generations to bring them together? Mm. This, is, this, is, uh, this was actually one of the very interesting points that we saw uh, initially when, when we started. Uh, it, it appeared as uh, uh, there was, there was uh, this disconnect uh, between, uh, like, older generation organizations and the younger generation organization. And uh, we kind of see, saw a contradiction here because uh, the ADOs, especially uh, the less experienced one, uh, when they didn't have uh, an, uh, like older, a little bit older uh, members among them, uh, they found it very difficult uh, to engage with other ADOs and also with members of their own community uh, from from other generations, but uh, where ADOs uh, had both young and older generation, they actually saw this huge advantage that uh, with with uh, having these these people from different generations, uh, they 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 actually bring in different approaches which works uh, better when and they they can basically cover uh, uh, more ground because, uh, because different approaches actually works with different segments of the community that they want to reach out to. And these uh, different approaches was uh, something that was brought on as a challenge by, by the organizations that were uh, mainly young. This is like because of the because of these different approaches we can it's difficult uh, to work together. But if they can uh, look past that, they would say that these different approaches is exactly uh, the thing that will help them um, to reach out to, to the wider community. Thanks, yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, I see more questions coming in. So um, one very um, specific one was whether um, the report and the research also looked at more charitable programs among the diaspora for Afghanistan. Um, and if there was any measuring of the amount um, that was sent and collected um, to Afghanistan, if you have any mm. idea of a, of a scale of measurement. Mm. And I know that also mm. we talked a bit about the, the difficulties in, in transferring money yeah. into Afghanistan, but maybe you could say a few words about this as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we, 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 we can divide this into like the amounts raised and then the amounts that were actually moved to Afghanistan. For the second part, we really cannot say, um, except for, uh, for some, of the, some of the ADOs that reported uh, about their cash distributions. We do have some numbers on that, but this is not this is not by any means uh, a, 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 a showing showing the scale of actually how much how much support uh, monetary support was moved to Afghanistan, and then going back to the amounts raised, uh, we do see in the report that uh, these different uh, fundraising strategies that these uh, ADOs had adopted. Uh, prevented uh, some of some of these key information that 
would be actually very interesting for the donors themselves to see uh, like what is what is your target? How much how much do you, are you planning uh, to raise? And did you reach that target? So uh, we, we can look at just one number here, and this is only for organizations uh, that uh, had uh, used uh, these uh, crowdfunding platforms, online funding platforms. Uh, for those uh, we counted, and this is by the time of writing the report, uh, these campaigns were still continuing. Uh, we, we had um, under 1 million something, I think 900,000 uh, dollars. Uh, was raised uh, in total, uh, but uh, this is this is just a segment a segment of all all the fundraising campaigns out there. Thanks. Yeah, um, I'm conscious of time, but we we do have a few more minutes for for one or two more questions. Um, and there was something specific about the coalitions also um, that quite often in diaspora work building community network infrastructure across the diaspora is a blind spot or missing and breeding, yet critical for success. And I think this is also what we what we talked a little bit about before, like what DEMAC aims really to do. Um, and uh, the question is whether you think that the infrastructure needs enhancing from the research we you've done. And is there any particular service support, any specific thing that could be provided um, for this diaspora, for the Afghan diaspora to, to enhance this community network. And I think this is an interesting question also for later for our panelists, actually. But uh, I'd like, Neda, from, from your research on the coalitions, um, mentioning that there is some new coalitions also and, and saying that how, yeah, how sustainable are they or what could them make sustainable in, in also keeping their, their talks with each other? Yeah, so... Uh... This, this, this affects different different uh, different uh, sections of this uh, coalition building from initially finding each other, uh, then uh, agreeing on something, and then and then uh, to continuing uh, working in, in in coalitions. One of the one of the things that was raised uh, um, from a couple of a uh, couple of videos uh, we we interviewed was. Um, a lack of uh, central database, which which uh, contains uh, the information of all, all the ADOs uh, that uh, that they can they can reach out uh, to when they when they need. But uh, in reality, that that does not seem quite feasible. Uh, uh, we can we can see you can see from uh, organizations' website itself uh, that. Uh, they're not. They're not always uh, even updated, right? So, uh, so, so some uh, this like even if you want to find it, actively looking for certain type of organizations, uh, we see that the information is not available online. With, with any kind of database to um, to be useful, it needs to be kept online, and the only people who can keep it online is the organizations. So, for for instance, we had this. Um, uh, report DRC report uh, that looked at uh, diaspora organization in Europe. I think it was Denmark, Southern Germany, and UK. So we used this uh, in the initial stages when we wanted to, to locate these this, um, ADOs. And it was interesting. And the report is uh, quite recent, like two years ago or something. And we did see that uh, I think it's like 400 uh, ADOs. And, uh, Around 60% of these organizations did not have any online presence. So this is this is like the first step, trying trying to find each other, and then then agreeing on on uh, common issues. This seemed to be uh, the the area that was not that difficult. So usually people can find something to agree on. Especially when there is there's issues like uh, with the current crisis and everyone. Uh, like the, the, the things they want usually uh, kind of emerges. But then again, it gets difficult uh, when, when uh, we get to maintaining uh, these, uh, these uh, coalitions and uh, going uh, further from uh, like working together on, on one specific project. This was, this was one, of, uh, one of the things that was also raised by uh, some of the interviewees. And, 
uh, even with the involvement of donors, like this is usually when the donors comes in, they will ask like two different ADOs and even like with the CSO in Afghanistan to work on this one project. And then when it's done, then everyone goes um, on their own way. So that's why we had in, in our recommendations as uh, one of the key points that uh, uh, the, these, uh, these donor involvements needs to be um, through multi-year plans. And uh, it, it needs to have milestones and it, it needs uh, ADO's engagement themselves to, to, uh, to really define these milestones and, and say, see what is, what is the progress and what is the process uh, for, for this engagement. Uh, meaning uh, coalitions building and coordinate coordination as an activity itself, as opposed to having this coalition to, to support this one project. Thank you very, very much, Neda, for, for yeah, being with us today, presenting uh, about the research and, and answering some questions. I know we have some more questions coming in, um, and thank you very, very much for them. Uh, we unfortunately have to stop